General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Mr. Basil Williams. Today, he'll be speaking about the Integrity Commission. But before we get into the details, we'll take a short commercial break. Stay tuned. The voting process. Once you have been identified as the elector you claim to be, you would be given a ballot paper that is stamped at the back, top and bottom halves in your presence. On the ballot paper, provision is made for you to vote twice. Once at the top section where you vote for the party of your choice in the general election, and once at the bottom section where you vote for the party of your choice in the regional election. Make your mark in the box provided on the right of your choice. After you have voted, fold the ballot paper as shown by the election official. Dip the first joint of your right index finger in the ink provided and place the ballot paper in the ballot box that is there for this purpose. You would then have to peacefully depart the polling station. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779, 223-9653, email pro at gcom.org.gy or visit GCOM's website at www.gcom.org.gy. Are you planning a trip for business or leisure and looking for the most direct and economic offers? But you confused? And instead of heading to the internet and searching websites for best deals, you simply need to contact the travel professionals at Munich War Travel Service, 45 Water Street, Churchtown. Their well-trained travel advisors with years of experience will assist you in booking your flights, accessing all airlines, hotels, car rentals at the most competitive prices to match your budget. Their customer service is second to none. Their qualified travel consultants will make you dream of seeing the world and ensuring your trip be the perfect one a travel experience beyond your expectations they'll give you the best value to save time and money provide 24-hour service to fix problems if things go wrong during your trip giving you options you haven't considered if you haven't decided where you want to go arrange group travel accepting all major credit cards both local and overseas daily deals available which are also available online so call visit or email them to have the experience of their immaculate service munich war travel service 45 water street georgetown 5 Two two seven six nine nine two or two two five two nine four seven or drop us an email. What is your travel at Yahoo dot? Welcome back. Uh, thanks for joining us. As I said earlier, I have in studio with me the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs, Mr. Basil Williams. Mr. Williams, thank you so much for coming. Yes, thank you, Sledvana. So Good afternoon, viewers. Today we'll be talking about a very important topic: the Integrity Commission. Uh, in the 90, 1980s, you've done, you've done a lot of work on the commission. Tell us about your work back then. Well, I, I recollect that when I came home from law school, as you know, I was employed as legal assistant to the first executive president of, of Guyana, Linda Fox Samson Morning. And I recall at that time that they were, they, they were talking of introducing integrity legislation, and in fact, there was a kind of white paper discussion going on. And uh, we, the, there actually was a time when Comet Vi and I actually appeared on a program and treating with the, this Integrity Commission. So first thing I wish to say is that the Integrity Commission has always been a good idea um, in terms of the People's National Congress reform. And for me personally, uh, I feel it's a good thing. The court administration also embraces uh, the Integrity Commission. And in fact, we have made certain amendments to make it efficacious since we took office in 2015. Yeah, and since 2015, for persons who uh, may not know, uh, the commission was reconstituted in uh, 2018, February 2018. I think between 2006 and 2018, it was uh, dysfunctional, but under this administration, it was reconstituted. And in 2017, there was amendment to the code of conduct uh, treating with the principles of persons in public life. Um, do you care to comment? That's correct. Well, those are some of the amendments that were made, as I said. And you know, it's the offenses were created also. This question of publication for the failure to submit, etc. So we felt and we believe that it is necessary, and it's all part and parcel of one of the first acts of the president himself. And I was uh, attending uh, Ethiopia, an anti-corruption um, convention there, and sign on, very sign on to the convention against corruption. You also went to the United Nations and sign on to. It. 
So the president was very serious um, about anti-corruption in Guyana. And the integrity legislation, of course, has to go hand in glove with that. Now, when he appointed me to have that remit, I recall in 2018, when the um, submissions were first requested, I was amongst the first to submit to the Integrity Commission because I felt that I couldn't be in charge of anti-corruption and the like and not file, and I, I filed. Um, I think after that, some names were published as not having filed. Now, fast forward to, um, let's go to 2019. I recall just after the Court of Appeal decision in a no confidence motion, and that would have been on the 22nd of March, yes. about a couple of days later, I received from the, um, a communication from the Integrity Commission requesting that I give for the particulars in relation to the submissions I made in 2018. Um, that, that's a long list. It was a long shopping list. I, 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 I would publish it online. They're asking all kinds of things. They're asking about. So one of the things is that you had to get valuations, updated valuations for assets, vehicles, properties, and the like. And of course, it's for you and your spouse. And my spouse worked at, works at the bank. And the question of share certificates and salaries and all. Of course, during that period, I was working on a no-confidence motion, so I really didn't have that kind of time. Really, it is the accountant who used to be preparing these things. But the problem you have is that after we change to the fiscal year, which ends in December, you have this fiscal year for Integrity, integrity Commission ending in, in June. In June, yeah. And it, it's really difficult to, to get for the Parliament, for example, in the year statement, because in the year statement there is December, not June. So all those things you have to take into consideration. But my understanding is that since, on the, and then in May, that was February, March, then in May, early in May, I got another letter saying that I should submit for June 2019. But since I was in the process of getting updated valuations, I couldn't file in June because that won't reflect the status of the assets that were filed in 2018. In other words, if I hadn't gotten that letter to do further um, particulars, give further particulars and updated valuations and the like, all I had to do was file the same thing in 2018 because there would be no major difference between the submission in 2018 and 2019. And at, the, at that point, I must say that the Integrity Commission's remit and, and I would say focus ought to be that they should be able to assess accounts to show whether there were increases in relation to assets after the, the person took office. So we can't lose sight of that. And you know we talk about submission and all that, but you can't lose sight of that. That's one. Secondly, my understanding is that since they close to June, they asked me to get these updated valuations, and everybody knows that's a long process. They are about saying to me that they were waiving the requirement for me to submit in June. Because, Be because I would have had to submit for 2019 the updated valuations. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? And in fact, they had engaged me till October now. In October, they sent a, a reminder more or less in relation to the valuations again. So we were engaged. So you were in con because we were engaged in the process. And in fact, I could tell you this, we were about to file on Friday, but I had to go to the country for the CLE conference. So the publishing of the information, I think you were among um, about... Uh, that I didn't file. Yes. You were but that's premature because I was engaged, engaged. with um, the commission in terms of ensuring they get all the, the updated assets, valuation and everything for vehicles, for properties, and different salaries and everything. And therefore, that, I knew it wasn't the commission whom, which made the release. It was gossip. It's, it, 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 right. Yeah. But then 
they never took into fact that um, intercom that they have been engaging you to ensure that you get the proper submission for 2019. In fact, um, I was to submit on Friday gone, but I had to go to the country, and I understand there was some difficulty. I, I suspect, mm -hmm. I don't know what the difficulty was, but it, it was curious. I was curious to know that they actually published this thing Saturday. So I don't know what they would have done if they had received it the Friday. Well, it was supposed to be filed today. So at this time, so they would have received it. So you were taken back by the fact that although you were engaging the commission exactly. since uh, March 2019, you've right. been in constant contact. And in fact, we spoke at the Guyana Chronicle, we spoke with Minister Bruins. She's, a, as you would know, Minister yeah. of, of Youth Affairs within the Ministry of the Presidency. And she had a similar issue where she would have submitted her documents on Friday. In fact, she, according to her, she would have um, been in constant contact with the commission, uh, sending letters and correspondence. But... Um, her name was, she was also on the list of ministers and members of parliament who would have failed to declare their assets. Well, so you were surprised. So I'm saying as a lawyer, I can't fail to submit my asset when I'm engaged with you in a process. And your conduct amongst a waiver, because I couldn't do an updated valuation between March and June. And, and this thing is very important. They recognize that they, they, they sent a communication to me in October. So they were saying they work with us till we get everything in. And there are people in Parliament, there are people in the Valuation Committee, there are people in the banking system. They know, in fact, one of them told my wife, but they don't understand how we have been working so long on these things. But they, they, there were many roadblocks. I, don't, I have my own views on that. Yeah. But I'm saying the legislation doesn't take into account that they're engaging with you. It couldn't be that they have this power to actually to do this and do that, and at the same time insist that you file in June. When what, what you file in June, they could actually tell you that you withheld you were tell information. Yeah. So it's common sense. So I don't know why they ran out with this thing, because everybody knows corruption is not in my DNA. I don't do crime. I don't do drugs. I don't take pride. They all know that. So I don't know what's this big deal and then dragging in other MPs. The question is, we need, the, the commission has to have more transparency because the question which begs itself is, what happened to these guys who were in office for 23 years? One of them, had, after two years, had a big palatial spread with pool and all that. What is the integrity commission doing about those things? That, I, I believe, is the whole essence of the existence of the Integrity Commission to show that after you take office, you are not unjustly enriching yourself and your families. That's the whole idea. So we want, for example, the commissioners. The commissioners have, have to be like Caesar's wife, above suspicion. Right now there is a... Um, a commissioner who is on a PPP list. So in a sense you feel um, this could Obviously be that, that commissioner will be prejudiced. We want to know this, the laws have to be amended. The legislation will have to amend one. We'll have to bring the fiscal year in, in, in um, alignment with the fiscal year, yeah. that is budgetary end, fiscal year, yes, the which ends December. in December. And, and secondly, we have to have in regulations must be made to ensure that the further and better particulars, whatever requirements that are being requested are standard requirements and not that they're selecting one person and um, visiting them with a plethora of requests and then a favorite the, is half of that. So we will have to have in regulations the various items that, that are, are supporting items that are required to accompany a submission. Because it doesn't make sense, you, you submit, and then whenever they're ready to come and tell you in, um, in May, 
the one for the better particulars when in fact in June you have to do another submission for that year. So we have to ensure we have a standardized set of requirements so that you know that when you're submitting, you have to have these things in mind. That's what is clear. We, it, there has to be greater transparency. So from where I sit, I have to ask questions. Are these things that they ask me, other people are being asked the same thing? Are the opposition members being asked the same thing? What is going on? It looks to us that they're only targeting the, um, the government um, ministers and MPs. So there, ha there has to be a level playing field in this exercise so that people won't feel that they're, you know, the Integrity Commission, you know, is not operating in the way that it ought to operate and therefore have the ownership by the people of its work. Minister, you said that you'll be uh, submitting the outstanding um, documents to the Commission today. Um, but where do you go from here? Um, your name is already out there. Uh, we've seen the reports, persons failing to declare their assets, probably um, under allegations and so forth. Where do you go from here? And I know that other ministers, I think Minister Valerie uh, here would, she, um, within the Ministry of Agriculture, she would have also expressed concerns that she would have declared her assets, but um, she would have declared her assets, but her, her name was still listed among those who would have um, defaulted. Well, first of all, those attempts to criminalize me, so just, they, just, they just don't work. You know, people know that. They will look at your track record. If the PPP could have fixed me with theft and stealing state assets and taking bribes and the like and corrupt acts, they, they would have done that a long time ago. But they can't. And as I said to you, I practiced 30 something years in the street. And nobody could level those accusations at me. So I'm not worried about that. But the thing I, I believe is that if Stabic News is going to go with that exercise, they, they should take a walk to the courts because they don't know, or if they don't know, they turn a, a Nelson eye to the fact that we are engaging the commission to get things right. It's not like you're not engaging the commission. You're engaging the commission. And everybody knows that everybody trying to get valuation is an expensive exercise also. And how long it takes, I think a minister, um, Bruce would have had the same concern that it takes a lengthy amount of time, months. Because you don't have enough valuers, mm -hmm. I believe. And it, look, this thing, one has to be careful, you know, that this thing is not some arbitrage around the necks of uh, government functionaries as to make it um, uh, a, fa a factor that could preclude people wanting to take office, you know? Because basically what they're doing is that you have to be engaging with the commission all the time, all the time, all the time, you know? And so if you have this thing brought to December, when you're doing your inland um, income tax returns, same time they could send it in. And, and you, you have the particulars and everything, your content work on it. So um, it was premature for a publication. It, it's not me involved in the Attorney General, you know. They know how I am. They basically, they decided they were taking a chance. They were taking a chance as to whether they pub what they published or what me was true or not. And, yeah. Although it was gazetted? Well, I don't know what was gazetted. What was gazetted doesn't, does but not include that it would You're include that huge age. It would and not in have fact, included was, that. that. That's another thing. So it is clear that we have to look at the Integrity Commission to improve its up modus operandi, its operations, so that everyone will feel, yes, there's a level playing field here, and the Commission is discharging its responsibilities in, in a manner in which accords with its remit. Mm -hmm. and the expectation of the framers of the legislation. Okay, any closing words on this particular topic? Before we leave, I know that you're also, um, briefly, I would like you to uh, touch on the GCOM matter. I know it's coming up on uh, Thursday, the 6th of February, but any closing words on the Integrity Commission, the publishing of your name and the names of other ministers who would have indicated that they would have submitted their um, the requisite documents. Well, what I hope now that this will be a good le an object lesson mm -hmm. 
that um, it's, it's not a uniformed exercise. Different persons might have different, um, might be in different stages of, of attempting to submit. submit the requirements. And if it were not so, GCO won't write to ask, um, the Integrity Commission yeah. won't write to ask you for further and better particulars. And I think that's a problem because they never, they never said that in the letter up front in any event, the first letter which came to you. They said they'd get back on to you in, the, in the, that first letter. And then there's no timeline when they're going to get back on to you. So when they get back on to you a month or two before June, you know, you're in a rut. And as I said, I said the recommendations earlier, but yes. I should go into regulations and the like. But we, we, I personally believe that the Integrity Commission and the legislation attendant to Dirto are necessary yes. for, uh, for us in this fight against corruption. I am proud that under my remit, I brought Ghana to 8 to 5 out of uh, a list of 100. So we fast going to that position of a, that figure of 100, where we will more or less have reduced corruption in this country after 23 years of rampant corruption to a real, manageable, and laudable um, status. Attorney General, in part, you would have appealed the High Court's decision that you cannot remove persons or GCOM cannot remove persons from the database. This database, sorry, um, you had earlier in January debates on whether that was uh, constitutional or, or not. Uh, this week, you're expected to submit uh, arguments on residency, um, the requirement you must be a resident in Guyana to vote. Uh, tell us a bit about um, your submission uh, based on what you have presented to the court already. Well, you know, I, these, these matters are sub judice, yeah. so I don't wish to in any way influence that. But the issue was not, on, the issue we had submitted on residency now, that already. Oh. The issue was the question of the existence of the Constitutional Amendment yeah. Number 4 Act of 1991. The status of the Act, whether it's valid, valid or not. And, um, I don't want to go, go ahead, and, um, but we have our position on the matter. Uh, yeah, and the I question is talk about sunset legislation. I could say about sunset legislation. Uh -huh. All the sunset legislation that we have, in a, especially during the period of 1990 to 1992, they have one common feature. They tell you when the act begins and when, when it, it ends. ends. And the particular amendment period dealing with it has nothing like that. It doesn't say anything like that, so it's not no sunset legislation. Okay, attorney. I must say thank you so much for joining us here at the Guyana Chronicle. To our viewers, thanks for joining us. If you would have just joined, uh, the Attorney General would have spoken about the Integrity Commission Act. He would have proposed several recommendations going forward to avoid uh, persons being named publicly as not declaring their assets when they would have been in the process uh, or when they would have been engaging the Integrity Commission. Uh, do join us shortly after this program for another edition of or an edition of Vantage Point. I've been your host, Swetlana Marshall, and like I said, join us for an, edi an edition of Vantage Point. Thanks for joining us. Guyol Super 95 gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 gasoline. The voting process. Once you have been identified as the elector you claim to be, you would be given a ballot paper that is stamped at the back, top and bottom halves in your presence. On the ballot paper, provision is made for you to vote twice. Once at the top section where you vote for the party of your choice in the general election, 
and ones at the bottom section where you vote for the party of your choice in the regional election. Make your mark in the box provided on the right of your choice. After you have voted, fold the ballot paper as shown by the election official. Dip the first joint of your right index finger in the ink provided and place the ballot paper in the ballot box that is there for this purpose. You would then have to peacefully depart the polling station. For more information, contact GCOM on 225-02779, 223-9653, email pro at gcom.org.gh.